Kate Mulvey. <laughs> Kate Mulvey. Kate Mulvey.
Thank you, Mark. Thank you so much. Mark will be leading us in our um, worship this month uh, as he plays for our worship services, but also as our men of the church are singing and bringing joy to us through melody uh, as the choir takes the month of August off. It's been our tradition here for many, many years and still is our gentlemen will be leading us in song this morning. Just a few announcements before we get into worship, and let me start by saying welcome to each of you in Christ's name. We hope that you'll make this a regular part of your Sunday. You know, Sunday to me always feels like it's a holiday. You know, we, we've got various holidays, and they have a feeling. I mean, you know, the anxiety, the tension, the excitement builds up for those holidays as we think about Thanksgiving and Christmas and Easter and, you know, Fourth of July and all of those things that we celebrate. But Sunday, every Sunday is a holiday for Christians. You know why we worship on Sunday and not on Saturday? It was on Sunday, the third day, when Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead. And so every Sunday that we gather, we are celebrating the resurrection. And isn't that a holiday? If it's not, mm, you need to look deep. But anyway, we welcome you to worship and we pray that God's blessing will be upon you who are here. And those of you who are joining us by live stream today and then later on through our recordings, through Facebook and also on YouTube, may God's blessing be upon you as you come and as you worship with us on this wonderful day, Sunday. Uh, let me take a little quick note at some of our inserts. Boy, there's a lot of them. And uh, the June and July memorials are listed here. Please take an opportunity to look over those and make sure we haven't left anyone. It was by mistake. If so, uh, that honorariums were given or memorials during these two months, June and July. Uh, also, uh, you know, we're celebrating starting back to school this week. But if you were in Guatemala... You would start school January the 1st, and you would only go to public school grades 1 through 8. And then after that, you'd have to pay. A family would have to pay. But here's the thing about it. It only cost $150 to go to school for a year in Guatemala. That's from January to the end of December. $150. Think about that. That pays for books. It pays the teacher's salary. It pays for a uniform that you have to wear. Now, Guatemala has a lot of poverty. And one of the ways that you and I help our brothers and sisters there through our partnership with our partnership church, El Golgotha, is we send $4,000 in October, November, uh, to help our children who are part of that church to go to school. And they, they go, not only are we paying for high school, what you would say, 9 through 12, but we're also paying for those who go to technical school and even college on that $150. Imagine that. Boy, uh, that is just something else. So there's a Guatemala student scholarship fund that has been established here many years ago. The idea is to take it up all during the year so at the last minute we wouldn't have this mad rush to get our money together. Well, we've initiated this, but guess what? We're still in the mad rush because throughout the year, throughout the year we've only received about a little over $1,000 for this scholarship so we're needing $3,000 more. Something for you to think about and pray about. You've agreed to do this through our session, and so we need that help financially. So if you can certainly help out during the month of August and September and even October, this money will be going, I think, probably the first part of November. Uh, 
So we, we need some funds, and that's my appeal this morning from the Ministry of Missions. Of course, it's CARE month as well. On the flip side, we're recruiting CARE teams for the 2024-2025 year. And uh, the way we say it is, you know, join a, join a CARE team and commit yourself for one hour, one week each month for one year. So there we have one, 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 one. And it all adds up to prayer and visitation through your ministry here. I'll be introducing some care stuff in a little bit. If you need to talk with someone else, and we do have someone this morning that's going to speak about care. And it's our A-team captain. So here she comes. It's Becky Sigmund. Now, Becky, I got a bunch of notes right there, so when you leave, leave these right here, okay? <laughs> uh, we, uh, Care Team A, meets the second week of the month. We have five members Mark, Mulvey, Debbie, Lessinger, Pam, and Cotton Crowder, and myself. And um, we don't meet uh, at the same time sometimes. Sometimes we come and get our things to do and do them at different times because it suits our schedule better. So if you wanted to join a care team and wanted to do that, that would be fine too. Uh, uh, Mark, Mark and Debbie do the prayers and Pam Cotton and I do the, do the cards and the letters. And uh, the acronym for care is actively, act, Christians actively reaching everyone. And I know, know you've noticed that in your bulletin. Uh, and this is the church's sincere attempt and desire to include everyone, letting them know and feel a part of our church family. When we, when we write cards to them, uh, we write cards to the shut-ins and let them know that they're in our hearts and uh, we're thinking about them and we're praying for them. And I've had many, many of them tell me how much it means to them for, to get these uh, cards. Or when we send uh, letters to the uh, servicemen, let them know that we're praying for them and that uh, we are uh, proud of them for their service and that we're uh, praying as they make choices and uh, as, you know, important choices uh, as they serve the country. And um, then we, we send cards and cards and uh, letters to the, uh, to the, uh, for the birthdays and the anniversaries, wishing, uh, wishing them uh, blessings throughout the year and on their birthday. And uh, as anything that you do, you know that you get more out of it than you put into it when you serve others. So uh, this is uh, a little thing that I used to sing with my kids at school and here at church too. This uh, Johnny Appleseed song, love is, um, love is the only thing you can give and end up getting more. So think about that. Mm -hmm. Love is the only thing you can give and end up getting more. All right. Thank you, Becky. Thank you. <laughs> Care Team A. Yeah. What a great ministry. And of course, I want you to read over your other uh, inserts that are here. The backpack ministry with area schools. We provide food, and that's what this is about. This afternoon, we're having our back to school school bash, five to seven. Maybe you didn't sign up. Come on. Uh, we'll just pour some more water in the soup. Yeah. And uh, we're taking nominations for church officer. Do want to mention that. And we're also signing uh, up uh, prospective students for our adult Bible study. It's on the last part of Acts. This will complete a whole year of study. Now, you don't have to have had the others. This will be covering the last uh, few chapters as we conclude the book of Acts. Children's Worship Center training is rolling around August the 18th. That's uh, on the flip side. And of course, uh, you know, uh, other announcements are right here in your bulletin. Um, PYC will not meet today. They were scheduled to meet, but they're not meeting today. Uh, and I tell you, there are other things that are going to be affected by Madison our director of youth and family ministries will be on vacation starting tomorrow. 
So uh, that means coffee and yarn. Nope. You know, but some other things, of course, please read over your bulletin. You'll know that the Friendship Club is meeting this Thursday. And a team has our honors of doing exactly what uh, Becky has just been talking about today. That is exercising our care ministry. If, if you would, just uh, reach down in front of you on the inside aisle, take out your care basket, pass it over to your neighbor. Our members know to sign uh, the care uh, using the white sheets. If you're a guest with us, fill in a yellow sheet. That gives you an opportunity to participate in our care ministry, but also it gives us some information about you that we will want to get in touch with you from the church. Oh, goodness, other things that we want to realize and look at is that on the 18th, we're celebrating the Lord's Supper. There'll be a children's worship center training and lunch following worship on the, in the fellowship hall. And on Sunday, August the 25th, we're having rally day uh, as we begin a new Sunday school year. So think about if you haven't joined the Sunday school class, be a great time to start. Remember, especially in your daily prayers, Debbie Austin and Penny Buff, Cotton Crowder, Mildred Dale, Joe Ganey, Bobby Gant, Janice Howell, Marsha Lester, Susan R. Long, Debbie Peeler, Carson Reed, Kat Sigmund, Dave Stalker. Dave is with us this morning, thank God. And we also see back here Cotton. God continue to bless y'all. And Jerry Strapp, along with uh, Katie, uh, I'm sorry, Kathy Brown, Ruth Randall, Joyce Sellers, Don Shaw, Sandra Wilkinson, friends and family of the church, our military Others that we pray for, that's near and dear to our heart, our partnership church in Guatemala, those with substance abuse addictions, you know, and we have a counseling center here for that. And our sister church to remember is the Sweetwater Presbyterian Church in Hickory, of course, the ministry here at First Presbyterian Church as well. This past week, we had 106 contacts made through our care ministry, 106. Are there other announcements that need to be made at this time that I'm just not aware of? Let me tell you, we're just, oh, Janet, Janet Fisher. <laughs> All right, thank you. Uh, any other announcements? Well, our call to worship goes like this. It's from Proverbs. Train up a child in the way that he or she should go. And when they are old, they will not depart from it. Let us worship God as we open our hymn book, as we stand and sing to his glory. Hymn number 276. Hymn 276, Great is Thy Faithfulness. Oh. 
You know, we speak to God in a variety of ways, and I believe that God actually choreographs prayer. God choreographs prayer. And those of you who were in the back and back here, you didn't see this probably, but I had a good seat where I could witness it. And that was Stetson went looking for his parents. I want you to think about that for a minute. He went looking for his mom and dad, and he found them. Our children are looking for their parents who instruct and who guide. Whether it's here on this earth or whether it's our Heavenly Father. Stetson, thank you for being a servant of the Lord this morning. I appreciate you doing that. Let us continue that prayer as we bow and say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. I want to invite all teachers, students, and others who are involved in education to please come to the front of the sanctuary. And all of you who are sitting, I invite you to pull out your insert for a blessing of student and teachers. On the flip side of this responsive is a unison prayer. But let's begin with God is the source of all wisdom and knowledge. Let us ask him to bless those who seek to learn and their teachers. For students, as they begin this new school year, that the Spirit of God may grant them the gifts of wisdom and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. For teachers, that they may share the knowledge with gentleness, patience, and concern for their students. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who seek knowledge of the things of this world, that they may always pursue God's wisdom, let us pray to the Lord. For parents, the first teachers of their children, 
that their faith and love may be an example to us always. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us continue as we pray in unison the prayer of blessing. Let us pray. Eternal God, creator of heaven and earth, you formed us in your image and gave us the ability to reason and learn. In your wisdom and love, you surround us with the mysteries of the universe. As we begin this new school year, bless all those who seek to learn, children, youth, adults, and teachers. Bless those who prepare the learning environment, teachers, teachers' assistants, principals, counselors, coaches, secretaries, tutors, cooks, custodians, nurses, bus drivers, and crossing guards. Bless those who support students, parents, grandparents, and this church community. Bless each with travel mercies and make each school a place of compassion and safety. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. The children leave their backpacks where they are, but come forward, please. Mason, come on. Let's get up front here. We might have to crowd around on the floor. We got lots of people today. That is a blessing. Okay. Can you all sit right here for me? Okay, hey, told you it was a blessing, lost people. Hmm. Okay, so do you know what a role model is? Yeah, some of you guys have heard what a role model is. Some of you might wonder what a role model actually is. It's someone you respect, admire, and want to be like in some way. It might be a famous person, such as a great athlete or a movie star. It might be someone you know personally, like your favorite teacher. It could even be your mom, dad, brother, sister, grandparents, aunts, uncles. Whether we realize it or not, we all have role models. So I have a couple pictures I'm going to show you today, and I want you to tell me what you think they are, so who they are. Sit up. Okay, I want you to tell me what that top picture is. What who do you think that top picture is? A doctor or a, or a nurse? A nurse or a doctor? What about that bottom picture? In the military, so a soldier? A soldier, someone who's in the military? Okay, what about this top picture? A police officer? Okay, what about the bottom picture? A teacher? Good. And what about this last one? What do you think that is? Is that a restroom? <laughs> family. <laughs> but I see restroom. I see it. Like a family restroom sign? That could be one. You are correct. So, it is important that we choose our role models carefully. If we... You, want to, you choose the soldier? That's a good one. If we choose a role model just because the person is rich or famous, we'll likely be disappointed. If you're looking for a role model, a good place to start is the Bible. In the book Ephesians, Paul said to the people in the church at Ephesus, imitate God in everything you do because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice. 
What are a few things about Jesus that make him the perfect role model to follow? What's something that Jesus has done that makes him a good person? He died for our sins. What else did he do? He did what? He he did split the bread for people. Anything else? No? That's okay. Jesus is kind, loving, forgiving, patient, obedient, respectful, and truthful, just to name a few. We could go on and on about Jesus, couldn't we? Jesus is our perfect role model because he is God's perfect son who brings us salvation to all who follow him. Okay, we're going to pray now. How do we pray? Ooh, look at these good prayers. God, thank you for sending your son to save us and to be the perfect role model for us to follow. Though others may fail, Jesus never fails. We want to live the life that is pleasing you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Okay, so go grab your backpacks and then follow me to the door. I guess if the men's Bible class had a, an anthem, that certainly would be it. For I know they've been singing that every year uh, at this time in August when the men gather and they sing Heavenly Sunlight. It would have been a disappointment in August had not y'all sung that. So thank you. We're blessed by it. Thank you. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, we lift our voices in song and in, in joy. We experience a peace that is beyond all recognition and a peace that passeth all understanding. We find delight in being called your children 
and we savor upon the fact that we are known as Christian Christians by our name. We praise you that you have forgiven us of our sins, that no matter how great nor small the sins of life have been, sin is sin in your eyes, and you have erased it all through Jesus Christ. Your name be praised. We thank you, Lord, and so we come to you now with one of the great blessings that you have entrusted us with. In worship, in prayer, we come to you, Lord, praying that the Lord Jesus would hear our prayers, that the Holy Spirit would usher them into your great presence. And there, as your word says, the prayers of the righteous come into the great throne room of your mercy as an aroma of pleasing incense burning before you. And we pray. Lord, do we pray. We reach out to you because we know, Lord, that you have given us the ability to call upon you, that you are our great physician, the one who created us, who formed us in our mother's womb, who brought us forth And now throughout our journey here upon this earth, you are the one to whom we turn. The one who has blessed us by giving us gifts of medicine, given us servants, Lord, who know how to use the skill of hands and the knowledge of minds to apply this this medicine. Those specialists, Lord, who who are with us during trying times and and those nurses and others, Lord, who nurture us during our weak moments and times as your spirit works through all, bringing us forward to health and to wholeness. We acknowledge that. And so we continue to pray for those, Lord, this day who are befallen, sick, injured, hurt, and we pray, Lord, healing. Healing is to come their way. We ask it in the name of Jesus Christ even now. The healing that is extended to us physically, but also emotionally. That in our emotions, we sometimes find ourselves walking in despair, doubt, and with a blindness that robs us of the true joy of life and living. That the darkness sometimes seems to choke the very life of us out and we wonder why I'm here. Why do I continue on? What is the purpose of it all? And so we ask your Holy Spirit to come now and to mend and to weave and to bring forth that sun light that we need in each of our lives to see again, once again, the redemption that is ours in you, O Lord, lifting our life to that peace and to that joy you so desire for us. We pray for the emotional sickness that exists around us. We pray for those, Lord, who are intellectually challenged, and we pray that the rest of us would step up And that in your goodness and in your love through us, that those who sometimes lag behind, sometimes those who can't make the mark, sometimes who who because of certain issues within their life, they're missing out. But are they not here as those who need your help, your help through the rest of us? who can nurture them and open doors for them that by themselves they can no longer function. Lord Jesus, I pray your grace and your glory upon those who will be helping our intellectually challenged and those who are spiritually, spiritually lacking. Oh Lord, equip your church with with. Christian workers, messengers, the servants of God, the children of God, to bring forth the message of Jesus Christ 
through our teaching, through personal witness, through examples in our life, our good works, Lord, that they might praise your name and grant you the glory. We continue to remember and pray in each of every station of our life to which we've been called. From politics, from education, teaching, uh, from being a, a teacher, a leader in your church, uh, to those uh, of, of other vocations who in our vocation we can witness unto Jesus Christ like no others can. I think of Brother Bobby Holtzclaw, who reminds us often about how he heard of Jesus Christ through a co-worker in a manufacturing plant. One who witnessed to him day in and day out, not in some dramatic fashion, but in a in a way that got his attention, that he began to be hungry for that word and be led by the Spirit to become a man of God. Lord, I pray for that for all of us, that in our areas of life, may Jesus Christ be taught that perhaps the only Bible some may ever read in their life are the actions of other Christians who walk among them. God bless us, hear our prayers, direct our ways. We seek you, our great teacher, to be that healing balm for this world. And we pray for it in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and all of God's people say, Amen and Amen. This morning in God's Word, in the Gospel according to Matthew, over in the 6th chapter, verses 2 through 4. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that you in your giving may be in secret. Then to your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Let us worship God now as we bring his tithe and our offering. own the vineyard, all the fruits that have been produced, Lord, they are in your hands. You are the owner. And yet you give each of us, your followers, the wonderful responsibility 
to take fruits that are applied in our life and to further and multiply those fruits as we use them for your glory in serving others and serving you. God bless us as we do so. Free us from greed and from neglecting to be the stewards that you desire. We pray as we make these offerings in the name of Christ Jesus our Lord, to him be all praise and glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. All righty. This morning I'm very conscious of the time that is fleeing for us. And uh, I do not wish to hold you captive too long beyond 12. Maybe we'll be out by one. No, I'm just joking. Uh, what we will do, and this has come to me, is uh, that we'll hear part of this sermon this morning, I hope it's a part that you can take, if you're not going to be with us next Sunday, that it will nevertheless be a teaching for you, but the complete teaching will be presented next Sunday morning as well to conclude this teaching. So I'm going to ask you this morning to turn with me in your Bible to two New Testament readings, first from a gospel. In the Gospel according to Luke, in the 13th chapter, we'll be reading and studying verses 1 through 9. And then over in Hebrews, an epistle, we'll be reading chapter 11, 17 through 12, 2, which is an epistle that we have been uh, looking at and studying through the last several weeks. This morning we're looking at a subject that approaches all of us. Why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? Why? Let us listen to the Word of God. Luke 13, 1 through 9. At that very time there were some present who told him about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. He asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, that they were worse sinners than all the other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Are those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Do you think they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told, he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it. He found none. So he said to the gardener, see here. For three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. Our second reading is from the epistle to the Hebrews, chapter 11, beginning with verse 17. By faith, Abraham, when put to the test, offered up Isaac. He who had received the promises was ready to offer up his only son, of whom he had been told it is through Isaac that descendants shall be named after you. 
He considered the fact that God is able even to raise someone from the dead, and figuratively speaking, he did receive him back. By faith, Isaac invoked blessings for the future on Jacob and Esau. By faith, Jacob, when dying, blessed each of the sons of Joseph, bowing in worship over the top of his staff. And by faith, Joseph, at the end of his life, made mention of the exodus of the Israelites and gave instructions about his burial. By faith, Moses was hidden by his parents for three months after his birth because they saw that the child was beautiful and they were not afraid of the king's edict. And by faith, Moses, when he was grown up, refused to be called a son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to share ill treatment with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered abuse suffered for the Christ to be greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt. For he was looking ahead to the reward. By faith he left Egypt, unafraid of the king's anger. For he persevered as though he saw him who is invisible. By faith he kept the Passover and sprinkling of blood, so that the destroyer of the firstborn would not touch the firstborn of Israel. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. It was by faith that Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say? For time would fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched fire, escaped the edge of the sword, won strength out of weakness, because mighty in war put foreign armies to flight. Excuse me. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sewn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all of these, though they were commanded, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, without us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, Looking to Jesus, the pioneer and the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy of it, which was set before him, endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand at the throne of God. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Amen. Why does God allow bad things to happen to good people? Gosh, how many times have I thought of that question, why myself, why? Well, let me begin with this little ditty. There was a farmer. He had three sons. I was attempted to name them 
Billy, John, and Steve, since that's my name and my two brothers, but I decided not to. No one in the family ever attended church because we always did. No one in this family ever attended church or had time for God. The pastors and the others in the church tried for years to interest this family in the things of God, but to no avail. Then one day, Sam was bitten by a rattlesnake. The doctor was called and he did all he could do to help Sam, but the outlook for Sam's recovery was very grim indeed. So the pastor was called and he appraised the situation. The pastor arrived. He was asked to pray. And so he began to pray as follows. O wise and righteous Father, we thank thee that in thine wisdom thou didst sendest the rattlesnake to bite Sam. He's never been inside the church, and it is doubtful that he has in all this time ever prayed or even acknowledged thine existence. Now we trust that this experience will be a valuable lesson to him and will lead to his genuine repentance. And now, O Father, wilt thou send another rattlesnake to bite Jim and another to bite John and another really big one to bite the old man? For years they have done everything we know to get them to turn to thee, but all in vain. It seems, therefore, that what all of our combined efforts could not do, the rattlesnake has done. We thus conclude that the only thing that will do this family any real good at all is rattlesnakes. So, Lord... Send us bigger and better rattlers every day. Amen. You think God operates that way? Do you? Is he really in the business of sending snakes or disaster or pain or suffering or death? Is God really in that way operating among us? Does God cause people to get sick? Is God responsible for pain and for suffering? Now to keep the question in context, was God responsible for the ills, sometimes barbaric treatment, that the Hall of Faith people listed here in Hebrews chapter 11 endured? Was it God's will that some of the best people go naked, homeless, hungry, imprisoned, tortured, and even murdered? Well, in order for us to answer such a question, we need to ask ourselves this question, and that is, what does the Bible have to say about it? There are a few verses in the Old Testament. Yes, there are where God causes something negative to occur. Prior to the great flood, God says, I will cause it to rain upon the ground. In the book of Exodus, God is said to have caused the plagues. And the prophet Jeremiah says that God causes the destruction of northern Israel by the Assyrians and later the southern Israel, Judah, by the Babylonians. But I wish to note that in each of these three instances, the casualty, God brings judgment, but it was not unjust. It was always sent. It always came as a warning. So nowhere in the Old Testament does it say that God causes good or bad things to happen to individual people. Even so, there are those Christians who have such a high view of God's sovereignty who choose to take comfort in the idea that God is a puppet master, 
manipulating the strings that control both people and events, orchestrating everything to his divine plan. So we just sit back and we enjoy the ride. We trust that God has everything under control. A preacher that I wish that I could preach like, no, it wasn't Billy Graham, it was Chuck Swindoll. He used to listen to that uh, program of his every afternoon. Brenda and I would. Chuck Swindoll, when we discovered him on a Christian radio station coming out of Tacoa Falls, Georgia. Chuck Swindoll gives an example of this in his book, The Tale of the Tardy Ox Cart, which tells the story of a young New Yorker. His name was Glenn Chambers, who on January the 15th, 1947, was about to achieve a lifelong dream of becoming a missionary in South America. When I first read this, I was thinking of Jim Elliott, that this story sounds so familiar to, I'm well aware of it. But this young man, this young man was flying on Avanca Airline, a flight bound for Ecuador, when it crashed clumsily into a 14,000 foot high peak in the Andes Mountains. It dropped a flaming mass of metal into a ravine below. Not one of the passengers aboard the DC-4 ever knew what happened. Before leaving the Miami airport earlier that day, Chambers hurriedly dashed off a note to his mother on a piece of scrap paper. That scrap of paper was once a printed piece of advertisement with the single word, why, sprawled across the center of one side. When the note arrived, there staring up at his mom was the honing question, why? Swindoll writes, of all of the questions, it is the most searching and it is the most tormenting. No single truth removes the need to ask why like this one. Here it is. God is too kind to do anything cruel, too wise to make a mistake, too deep to explain himself. Ms. Chambers stopped asking why when she saw the who behind the scenes. And then Swindoll notes, acceptance is taking from God's hands absolutely anything he chooses to give us. Looking up into his face with love and trust, even in thanksgiving and knowing that the confines of the hedge within which he has placed us are good, even perfect, however painful they may be, simply because He himself has given them. A high view of God's sovereignty brings peace to some, but not peace to all. Next week, we're going to look in the New Testament at the word cause. Cause is never linked with God. Leave with this In your heart, God says in Isaiah chapter 55, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. We'll pick up next week with what the New Testament has to say about all of this and its connection with us and with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, due to our own experiences, we sometimes pray and ask why. I pray, Lord, that we might grow ever stronger to put our trust in you, to lay that trust before you, and to live in that trust in our lives, though we do not understand. And sometimes 
are just left with the question of why. In Christ's name I pray, amen. Would you turn to hymn number 304? As you leave this house of worship and go into the world where you make your life, go and remember. Remember that by the goodness of God, you have been born. Remember that by the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, you have been redeemed. Remember that Christ has promised to go with you every day to guide you, to strengthen you, and to comfort you. He promised you he would when he said, Lo, I am with you always. Remember that while all others will call you a slave, he calls you a friend. So go now. Live your life. Serve God in that powerful relationship that you have with the Master. In the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God our Heavenly Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit go with you now and always. Thank you. Good to see you all. Sing it over. Amen. Come on, Martell. All right. I'm going to be going that dear church. Good to see you all, too. I'm <laughs> <laughs>